Live in downtown Detroit, Local 4 live stream with Jason Carr starts now. I love how you guys are all the behind the scenes guys, the uh, producers, the web geniuses here, the, the digital domain directors uh, giving each other nods and signals like, yes, we're ready to go. Go live with the JCE, the Jason Carr Experiment, the 915-ish. The reason why we say ish is because we actually went live at 916.48 or something like that today. Gives us a little wiggle room. A little wiggle room? How is everybody doing? How are you doing, John? It's Thursday. We're almost there. Almost. Almost. Almost there. Trash day at my house. I just realized I did not take out the trash by the moonlight this morning. Did you see the moon? Probably not. No, I didn't. The moon was ginormous. Did you see it on your way in? It was, it was, I was like a huge, <laughs> it was like a huge, <laughs> Chuck at the assignment desk says circle in the sky. Yeah, it looked like one of those ridiculous harvest moons, but extra bright. I'm sure that there was, there was some, can you research that for me in between scanner calls? Figure out why the moon was so bright and big and circular in the sky this morning. John's right on that. Hey, uh, we're going to lead today with something called My Dad Used to Be Cool. And on that note, here comes Ian. <laughs> My daughter is Sarah. Sorry, John. There he is. My daughter will never think I'm cool. Why? She's just going to grow up and she's going to be like, have a phone. And she's going to be into stuff by the time she's eight that I wasn't into until I was like 15. It's going, going way too fast. She's about to go to kindergarten. I'm freaking out a little bit. Yeah, mine just started. I'm freaking out myself. But yeah. all right, good luck with that. All right, thanks, man. All right, there goes Engineering. You can follow him on Facebook, our chief operations guy here at, at Local 4. He's known as Ian Engineering, just like engineering, but E A E A I A N. Ian Engineering. My Dad Used to Be Cool is a book by Keith Negley. It's available for $11 on Amazon. The story illustrates the dynamic between a son and his father and de uh, demonstrates the sacrifices a parent makes for their child. And it does so in very few words with um, very cool mod illustrations. Wow, it just got really loud in the local four newsroom. We got scanner traffic going off and people talking, a whole big conversation going on behind me. Anyway, um, if you have the dad, or if you're the dad that has the uh, arm sleeve of tats and you used to play in your college rock band and drive a fast car and you've traded all that for diaper caddies and um, PTA and stuff like that, then you can certainly relate to my dad used to be cool available right now on Amazon. See, this is what happens. We're talking about breaking news right now, so they're shouting across the room. Popsicle salesman. We heard about this one, what, last week was it? Was that what? Okay, I just saw it for the first time, I guess, last week. Or maybe early, has it changed? Maybe the updated number. 89-year-old um, Fidencio Sanchez pushing his popsicle cart in Chicago. Somebody saw him struggling with the cart, bought 50 bucks worth of popsicles, then that person set up a GoFundMe on Fidencio's behalf, and yep. the GoFundMe now is up to... $250,000. $250,000 from all over the world for this um, sweet uh, popsicle vendor in, in the Windy City. So the power of crowdsourced funding, right, John? That's right. Having come of age with social media, what do you? What's your take uh, on stuff like Kickstarter and GoFundMe and stuff like this? Kickstarter, I'm I'm all for. That's a great thing. GoFundMe, however, takes five percent of what gets raised. <laughs> so go fund them. Exactly, exactly. And and too often you see family members giving to to another family member through GoFundMe, not realizing that. 5% of that is not going right. to Right, so just to use the site, you're uh, funding 5% away from, you're funneling it away from. And what's more interesting is they're a nonprofit, so they're not even paying taxes on that. Oh boy. Hey, did you hear in France that they are banning single-use 
plastic cups and knives and plates and forks and spoons and that sort of thing. You know, they, they use it once at a picnic and throw it away. They are banning that uh, as part of a uh, environmental act. It actually won't be formally adopted until 2020, giving um, the industry time to develop alternatives to non-biodegradable plastics like solo cups and the utensils you see there. So that's going on in France. So you won't be able to have your baguette uh -huh, on a uh, <laughs> on a plastic plate anymore. Yeah, I have to bring a glass plate. The Eiffel Tower. What's that? You have to bring a glass plate or uh, bring some some metal cutlery. But from what I understand, what this is supposed to do is drive uh, innovation into come uh, decomposable type of utensils and things like that. Right, none uh, biodegradable on its way out. Um, salads. There's no doubt some plastic involved in uh, fast food and there is a 650 square foot fast food drive-through salad place that looks like a, um, a Sonic really but it, instead of Sonic it says salad and the way that the people that started this say they're going to be competitive is by focusing. They have low overhead, small workspace. They don't have to power a bunch of cooking equipment, that sort of thing. So they can just do fast, healthy salads um, for the health conscious on the go uh, and turn a profit that way. They have plans to um, make that a multi-state effort. I forget where that is started, but where that's located, but they plan to go beyond their state lines and uh, spread like a, a typical franchised operation across the uh, across the country. You really shouldn't be eating while you're driving, but a salad seems almost impossible to do. Interesting thought. You took it the extra yeah, yard French there. fries is a hand food and, sure, and you can drive burgers with your knee. and everything else. You can use one hand Hold to do it. Hold the French fries like this. and. But with a salad. With your I, knee right there. But the salad, I don't going like this. Drive through salad is what we're talking about. Can't do about. it. Can't do it. If Just red lights. If you're trying to get healthy, you can do it. You've lost weight, haven't you? Yeah, 14 pounds. E engineering <laughs> lost 14 pounds. I thought you looked skinny. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, congratulations. You're you going to tell us how you did it? And on the next episode of Jason Carr Live. All right, and tomorrow, Friday. On the uh, 915 ish, we're going to find out from engineering how he lost 14 pounds just since I've started working here. Maybe it's the stress. It's probably the stress. <laughs> <laughs> um, rolling clouds. This, this is, is cool. a phenomenon. Yeah. And um, somebody was wise enough to turn this into a gift from a video that was shot uh, over Lake Michigan. Look at this. This is sort of time lapse, but look at that. Yeah, it's four times the speed, but it really is incredible. Don't, don't you expect Independence Day? I mean, Bill Pullman to show up as the president. And, and, and Will Smith flying through those clouds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> speechifying about this is our Independence Day. So, yeah, that's a, uh, that is a phenomenon. Look at that. I mean, it's, talk about burying the lead. You stay in that first camera shot forever, and then you, you pan over to the left. It's ominous. It, it really is a little frightening. It just rolls, and it's, it's uh, I talked to Brandon about this earlier, it's just one of those weird phenomena in nature that, uh, that happens. Brandon was, look at that, look at how it's getting darker as it kind of blows over. Um, Nick Ner Nerbone, uh, Nerbon, uh, is the, the person that shot this, so we give him credit. Thank you, Nick, for your Rolling Clouds video that's uh, trending online right now. And watch that all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Our morning weather guy, Brandon Rue, I shared that with him earlier, and he literally was like at his weather desk, like this. It's mesmerizing. That's what he looked like. He didn't look like anim animals with their eyes in front, though. That's oh. a whole different deal. Okay, so this is a little creepy. More creepy than the clouds. Let's see. Can you blow these up full? Oh, yeah. So, the, basically, this is just a, a meme that's going on right now online where animals that typically have their eyes on the sides of their head have them moved to the front and how weird they, were, they would look as a result. That, that one's creepy. That one's the worst. Yeah. That one is definitely the worst. <laughs> Who does that look like? That looks like somebody. <laughs>
lot of fun. I don't know why I find this so amusing. I just do. Thank God for Photoshop. Is that what? Is that? It, it must be. Someone's Photoshop playing, is what yeah. we did there. <laughs> so imagine if that animal right there. Can we see it again? If that was staring at you for more than 3.3 seconds, wouldn't that freak you out a little bit? I think that's the number, right? It's true. They've done studies. They've they've done a study, and apparently anything less, dramatically less, or dramatic, dramatically more than 3.3 seconds, and it comes off as creepy. So if you if you look at somebody and they're looking at you and they're looking at you and they're looking at you, then they look away. But if they keep looking at you, it gets creepy. After 3.3 seconds. Who, who gets the idea to study how long? It's, it's interesting because, I mean, you can feel someone looking at you. Yeah, exactly. uh, it, it's, it's just like a feeling that you have, and uh, so, someone took the time to look into it. They put a whole, uh, whole group together. We hope that you looked at us longer than 3.3 seconds on Live in the D today. We'll uh, be kicking that off here in about uh, 35 minutes or so. What time? What time you got there, Jen? Yeah, about 33 minutes. Yep. We'll start live in the D with myself, Chuck, and Tati. We went for fish and chips yesterday. We did a group outing as, uh, I think, eight or nine of us from the show. Um, producers, behind the scenes people, we all road tripped out to Brightmore to Scotty Simpson's Fish and Chips. And uh, everybody had a raucous good time. I would go there for the French fries alone. I've but, never been. Um, do you know where it is? No. I'll have to take you out yeah. there sometime, John. Um, yeah, so you can look at that on social media, on my Facebook page, at Jason Carr TV, or on the Twitter, or the Live in the D Facebook page. We put pictures up of our big field trip, our class field trip, from the station out to Brightmoor to Finkel, west of Lasser for Scotty Simpson's Fish and Chips. Uh, next on the docket, last on our rundown of topics, the Tigers. Finally, maybe they can take three or four from the Twins. What do you think, John? No, I didn't, uh, I don't know. Yesterday they lost, or won, the day before they lost. Uh, Tigers beat the Twins uh, yesterday, 9-6 to six in comeback fashion. Um, they are behind the Blue Jays, this reminds me of 87. They were behind the Blue Jays by a game and I believe there's 17 or 18 to go. Mike Pelfrey is on the mound today at 110, so we have an afternoon start at Comerica Park for the Tigers and the Twins. The weather's supposed to be nice, so. So yeah, there you have it. Um, we will see you on Live in the D and on Facebook, Bull of Bacon Nation. I'll have a question forthcoming, and we'll see you on the TV. Stay classy, Detroit. <laughs>